Hi guys, welcome to episode 19 of Best Mac Apps. Today I'll be showing you other 6 best Mac apps for August 2018. If you like the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified when a new video is released. Okay, without further delay, let's get started. App number 1 is called Clean My Mac X. Yeah. If you are familiar with Clean My Mac 3, this app is literally the same. In fact, this app is an updated version of Clean My Mac 3, but with a gorgeous redesigned look. You can see the look here, it's gorgeous. It also comes with more added features which can optimize your Mac even better than the previous version. To me, if you compare Clean My Mac X to its predecessor, Clean My Mac 3, let me open it. Here. If you compare these two apps side by side, I am totally in love with Clean My Mac X because of its cleaner look, sleek design, and attractive animations. If we click, you see the animation, it's awesome. Everything has been redesigned to look cooler and more attractive. If you look at the old one here, Comparing to this, it's cooler and much more attractive than the older version. The features are mostly the same, but it adds some more cool features to it. So if you compare these side by side, you start with the top. They have Smart Cleanup, but this one, it changed the name a little bit to Smart Scan. But if you start cleaning up, I will scan and show you what it has added. Okay, let's see another one, this one. You see, even the process of scanning, it's much slower than the newer version. So the size that it found, it's the same. It's 1.46 gigabytes. If I click run here, you can see this. They have added more new cool features, including running the maintenance script. In the previous version, it doesn't have this. It also included the flash DNS catch and also free up the RAM. With the previous version, it doesn't have that. Let's finish cleaning it. Done. Let's try with this one. Done. You see even the sound, it's different. It has new sounds and new looks and everything. Again, if you compare this side by side, they have Smart Cleanup, but they change it to Smart Scan. System Junk, you look at this the same. But again, if you take a look at the new look here, it's much cooler. They have Photo Junk, same here. They have Mail Attachments, same. Again, the differences between these two is just the look. It has been redesigned to make it more optimizing and look sleeker than before and it's easier to use look at itunes junk same here again the look of itunes is much cooler they even included the look of the iphone x here trash bin same here but if you look at this the reason why when you click on the scan for smart cleanup it takes lots of time because it have to scan for large or older files as well but with this the large and old files have been moved down here so it scans faster. If I want to scan the large and old files, I can also scan it, but again, it takes shorter time. You scan here, you see, very quick. And if you look at this side, they do not include protection feature, but this one, they include protection as well, scanning for malware, privacy, just like this one here, privacy. And they also included the optimization. This one doesn't have. Here, the optimization, you can see the maintenance, they have it as well the uninstaller and let's say I want to delete an app they even have cooler animation click here click can install same thing if we want to do this on the older version let's say this one it will ask me this click can install see the animation is not really cool at all and they even include the updater here so that any app that needs updating, you can update it directly from here. Like this one as well, I don't have to go to its website. I can just click update here and it stop updating for me. Done. See, it's now on version 0.9.45. Any apps that need updated, you just update it from here. Because these two apps are basically the same app, all the features are mostly the same. The most noticeable difference is the look and especially the animation. And everything has been redesigned to look very cool. And I love this app so much. 
So again, if you love Clean My Max 3, you're definitely gonna love this app too. It's just the best updated version for Clean My Max 3. Okay, this is app number one. Let's move on to app number two. App number two is called Daisy Disk here. What this app does is that it allows you to have a full control over your Mac hard disk space. In other words, with this app, you are able to see the details of what your hard disk is used for even the hidden files. Sometimes you may wonder what consumes your hard disk space so quickly that your Mac ends up having only very small space available. With Daisy Disk, it shows me the hard disk like that. I click scan, just wait for it. Here, you see it show you a very beautiful graph like this. As you can see, I divide your hard disk usage into different categories. You just roll your cursor on it, it will show you what it is and how much space it consumed. So with Daisy Disk app here, it will allow you to see in detail whatever that consumes your disk space. Whether it's a hidden file or a system file or a normal file, this app is really awesome at dealing with your hard disk consumption and help you to remove those unwanted usage to get lots of missing storage back. This is my Mac hard disk. So what it consumes is 180.8 GB. I have only 68.9 GB left of free storage. So I can check each of it to find out what it is. Click on user. They even show me smaller objects. You can click on that to see what it is. You can even delete this if you want to. It says here drag and drop file here to collect them. Let's say you want to delete this. Drag that. Drop it here. See? And you click delete. Done. You click on this to find out more. You can see here application supports. They have 37.4 gigabyte. Click on it to find out more here. These are application support that consume lots of space. And usually these are hidden. You cannot find it. But with these Daisy disk, it shows you what file or folder that consume the most space. Like in this situation, my dry C has consumed 33.8 gigabytes. This happened because I used an application called Vine Bottler to install Windows application on my Mac. In fact, I used it to install FIFA 2008, which is which is a Windows game and it consumes a lot of space. It's about 33.8 gigabytes and it also needs application support that it double the size. But the other half the hidden. I try to use clean my Mac 3 to scan, but I cannot find the hidden file. I try to search the internet and I found this app, Daisy Disk, and I was surprised by how effective this app is at finding hidden files. To delete, I can just drag this and drop it here. So if I delete this, I will get 33.8 gigabytes back. But before we delete, let's take a look at my available storage first. Right now I have 69.28. If I click delete here, you see it gives you 5 seconds to think in case you want to change your mind. Now it's done. Let's see the storage. See? Now my available storage is 103.04 gigabytes. You see? It's really awesome with this. Again, if you go back, it consumes less now. Again, you can go folder by folder like this to see what's consume lots of space. And you can decide to delete whenever you want to. to delete, you just drag and drop it here and it delete very quickly. It will not go to the trash can. It just delete permanently on the desktop as well. You see what consume lots of space. You can delete those quickly. With this, it shows you everything. Even the system file. If you go back here, you see system here. Click on it, see? It even show you the system file that usually with normal application will not show you this because you delete any of these, it will crash your computer. So if you don't know what you're doing, do not system files as you can see with daisy disk no file or folder that you cannot delete okay this is app number two let's move on to app number three app number three is called drop zone three here so when you click on this the app will run in the background in fact it will be at the status bar here you will see this down arrow that's the look of drop zone three so as its name suggests what this app does is that it allows you to drag and drop files and folders anywhere you want on your mac with the traditional way it's quite difficult to move a file or folder from one location to another on your mac but with drop zone three you can do it much faster and more easily than before let me show you example here when you run this app whenever you click hold on a file or folder it will pop up this one let me show you here see it pop up that and show you the shortcut where you can just put it somewhere but first let me show you with the traditional method first if i want to do that i have to open another window let's say i want to put it in download 
and drag it and drop. I have to open the window, drag and drop like that. And again, it takes time. But with drop zone 3, it's faster. Again, it's not really like 10 times faster, but it may be 2 or 3 times faster. So to move the file, I drag here. And I drop on the drop bar here. It's right there. I click wherever I want to put it. Okay, let's say I want to put it here. I click on the status bar here. The app is here. Drag and drop here. It's not on the desktop anymore. It's just move here. See? So it's much easier. Let's say you want to drag more than one file. So it stay there. There's three files. Now you go to wherever you want to put it. Let's say I want to put it in here. Click here. And you drag this and drop here. Done. Now it's not here anymore. So what's even cooler is that if you take a look at the status bar again, you may wonder what these are for. So you can also drag and drop a file of files into the shortcut of an app to send or upload it. You can see at the bottom here, I have AirDrop, I have Email, Twitter, Imgar, YouTube Downloader, Google Drive, and Finder Path. Let's say I want to send this file through AirDrop to another iPhone. I just drag here and drop on AirDrop, release. See, it's ready to send. So when it detects another iPhone or another iOS device, you just click there and you can send. Same thing you can do with whatever app that it shows here. I can send it through Twitter as well here, drop on Twitter, right here. You type something and you can post it. If you drag it to Google Drive, it will upload it to Google Drive. Look at here, see this? So I put it there, start uploading done and you can see this this is youtube downloader which means you can download youtube videos using this app as well you can also add more shortcut feature to it as well yeah add google drive and youtube downloader you can add amazon s3 or Flickr or facebook let's say add facebook here yeah. which means i want to drag and drop here on facebook it's really cool if you go back to this and you want to add more cool shortcut you just click here click preference and you go to user actions you take a look at here they say download more actions here click here it will redirect to the app website so i download this one already you can also download this feature here bitly or image shack install application zip files and a lot more here you can even upload it to youtube as well so let's say i want to install zip files here click on it click allow and click add to grid so choose a destination folder for zip file to you so i would put it on desktop and click open so down here if you click on the status bar again you can see zip files feature here i want to compress this into a zip file i drag it and drop here on the zip files now it asks me to name the zip file i put test it click ok done it's really cool and also to activate this on the status bar you can also use the shortcut keyboard if you go to the preferences here they will tell you you say f3 to activate that you cannot just click on f3 you have to click on function key combined with f3 here yeah? if you click on f3 alone it won't activate you can see on the download folder they have letter d the preview letter p any of these they have the shortcut let's say if we click letter d it will open downloads folder for me see here so this is kind of useful let's say you want to open a folder quickly this is a way you just like in window you have to click on a windows key plus e it will open a new window for you but this is similar but it's like not just two shortcut keys but three here you have to click function key plus f3 and then you click on d let's say i want to go to a specific folder from my status bar here like i have this download i can just add another folder here as well so that i can access that folder quickly and conveniently to do that let's say the folder is in downloads and let's say this one i want to access this popcorn time folder quickly so i have to drag it drop it here but you don't drop on the drop bar you drop on the add to grid now it's here. Now if we want to access it, I can just click there and click here. It will go directly to my popcorn time folder. Or I can also use the shortcut key. Click on function plus F3. And then I click on O. See? It's really cool. Okay, this is app number 3. Let's move on to app number 4. App number 4 is called Reflector 3 here. 
What this app does is that it allows you to mirror your iOS devices like iPhone or iPad to your Mac. What differentiates between Reflector 3 and other mirroring apps is that with Reflector 3, you can mirror more than two devices at the same time onto your Mac screen, while other apps can only mirror one device at a time. Let me show you an example here. When you run this app on your Mac, the next thing you need to do is make sure that your iPhone or iPad and your Mac are using the same Wi-Fi. So after using the same Wi-Fi and this one is opened, you go to your iPhone or iPad, you swipe up to activate control center and then click on screen mirroring and you will see the name of your MacBook, click on it. So right now you see that's my iPhone screen. Just drag it aside, make it smaller. You see it's mirroring my iPhone screen. You can also record each mirroring iOS device so that you can save it for use later. You can even change the look of this iPhone here by clicking here. And you see frame and it knows that this is iPhone 8 plus. It shows me three choices here and mine is a space gray so I click on here. Now it's turned black. You see, you can even change the look, the frame of your iPhone or iPad. Let me add another device in. But before I add another device in, I want to make sure that this one does not turn off the screen after one minute. Now let me connect my iPad. Now you can see, that's my iPad. Let me resize this, put it here. This is my iPad. You see, you can add two or more than two devices at the same time. I can even add one more device, but there's no space on the screen. But if you have another device, you can also add that too. And each of them has individual recording for you to record and even take photo of the screen. Again, I can change the frame of my iPad as well. And again, it detects that this is iPad Air 2. You can change the frame. And mine is gold. So I click on gold here. You see with this app, sometimes when you make some changes, you may have to resize the mirroring iOS devices too. That's one annoying part of this app, but apart from that, it's really cool because it allows you to connect more than one device at the same time. You can see, so I can use both my two mirroring devices at the same time. It's really cool. This is Reflector 3. You can try this app by yourself. Again, all the links to all the apps are in the description below. If you're interested, you can check them out. Okay, this is app number four. Let's move on to app number five. App number five is called Contacts here. Basically with this app, it allows you to switch between windows on your Mac much faster and simpler than before with four different ways. The first way is similar to the traditional app switcher. You have to click on command tab. Let's say I quit this app. If I click on command tab, you can see this is command tab, the traditional one. But after I open context, if I click command tab again, it shows different look. See? Usually when you minimize this with the traditional command tab to activate app switcher, it will not maximize those apps for you if it is minimized like that. But with this context app, even though it's minimized already, you can maximize it by clicking on command tab to select the app and release. It will maximize that app. That's the first way. The second way is you can also activate app switcher using the keystroke on the keyboard. With this method, you have to use option key plus the number from number one to number nine to activate it. Let me show you example. If I click on option and click number one, see, that's the number. It shows you here, if I want to go to contacts, I have to click number two. And go to finder, click number three, four, four, Firefox, and so on. So let's say I want to go to Firefox. I have to click option number four. Option number five, go to Safari like that. See, that's another way. So this is also a quick way that you can do that. It's very quick. Just click the option key and number at the top. But you need to remember the number. That's the problem. But if you click on it quickly, you will see the number and you can go to it quickly. Let's say I want to go to Walter 2. I click number seven. See, it's really cool. That's method number two. Method number three to activate app switcher is by using the cycle through the recently used application. To do that, it will show you on the right side here. See, these applications have been used and it's still running. It shows you the logo. So you just move your cursor on it like that. Click. It will go to any application you want to. See? This is even faster than the other two methods. That's method number three. The last method, method number four, is you can switch between apps or activate app switcher by using search. 
to any windows it's similar to spotlight search here but with this search is a little bit different you have to click on control space so we click on control space it activate only the running app in the background all of these running app in the background you click on that it will show you here when you activate you can just click on it but if you want to search you still you can do that too again to activate it click control space let's say i want to go to google i click only g it detect that it will select it and click enter it go to google safari again i want to go to walter i click on w see it's like at the top click on it it will go to walter too so this is out of four great ways of activating app switchers for you with this context app okay this is app number five let's move on to the last app of the list the last app of the list is called tem monitor here okay this is the look of the app as its name suggests with this app you can visually monitor the temperature here the fan the voltage the current and the power of your mac so that you are able to take the right action if your mac starts to perform weirdly there's nothing to configure on this app it just run in the background for you it shows you the temperature like this of your mac what it's currently running at it's still green so it's okay if it changes to red that's a problem so it shows you like this in fact you quit this it will run in the background like that it shows you the temperature and you can also change that temperature format by going to settings here they have temperature unit you can change it to celsius or fahrenheit it's up to you it depends on where you live I'll show you the fan as well so you say at normal speed the fan the voltage the current the power you can even allow it to run at notification center so if you drag from the left like that with two fingers you will activate notification here it will show you here if it doesn't show the first time you install this app it will not show so you have to click on edit and you can add this from here into the today's notification as well so like i said there's nothing to configure here after you download and install this app and let it run it just only show you the temperature here and then when you see the temperature you can take action later this is really awesome with this app okay that's it guys these are six best mac apps for august 2018 thank you so much for watching if you like the video please Give us a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe for more useful videos in the future. Have a great day guys. See you in the next video.